Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Anna Letitia Cook of Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women and the girls on the road in their quest to support women entrepreneurs around the world. Fernanda and Tassiana are visiting 26 countries interviewing women and researching the conditions, the business ecosystems, the challenges and advantages that exist in each country. So today we're visiting Japan, somewhere that I dream of going to, so it's going to be very interesting. Hi Fernanda and Tassi, how are you today? Hi Anna, how are you? Fine, thank you. So tell me, what's the general vision of business and women in business and particularly women entrepreneurs in Japan? Well, Anna, um, I would say that Japan has not like a very good, uh, bright environment for women in business in Japan. Um, Japan, like according to many reports, they have the, one of the lowest level of entrepreneurship. And like even it's very hard for women to keep their business, to keep their position in corporate world as well. Japan, it's a very male dominated country. They're very homogeneous as well, like almost like 90-90%, more than 99% of the population are Japanese, yeah. which makes them very, very into their own culture. Yes. And unfortunately, women in Japan, although they are very, you know, the women we met are very strong and they're like true trailblazers and they want to move forward, but they face a very strong culture of machismo. Like that they have to, like once you're married and once you have kids, that's it. It's like, is your brain is out of your body. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, I, was, I was going to say that it was really shocking to know that. I mean, we all know about the, the level of how they all work very hard and the corporate uh, life in Japan in general is really, you know, the core, it seems to be the core of the life, along with family, of course, and the tradition. Yeah. So yeah. that's why they work 20, 25. I mean, they work crazy hours. And of course, impacting the, the quality of life and the suicide rates, of, for example. So they have many issues. And women, in addition to that, you know, in addition to having to work these crazy hours, they have to, to live in a very oppressive in terms of the opportunities, of course, the lack of opportunities, but mostly the social pressure that they face to get married, to have kids. And, you know, once they've done that, it's pretty much, okay, now you stay home and focus on your family. Yeah. Really? So in that case, what does it mean to be a woman entrepreneur in Japan? It must be very difficult. It means that you have to go against all odds, like all, you know, pressure, and you have yeah. to really uh, stand out and, and break up uh, barriers yeah. and traditions that even though you are a woman, and even though you might be married, that you want to have your own business, you wanted to develop professionally, you wanted to have like a fulfilling life besides your family life as well. And, and that's what we face it. And we saw many women like they are extremely well prepared, as we were mentioned about France last week. Yeah. They go to university, they have like sometimes live abroad, they have like a second language, you know, they speak English. And they have all these aspirations that sometimes are cut short because society thinks that once they are married, they have to give up on everything to focus on their families. And it's not like only like your own, your husband families that pressures you. It's their own, your own family that pressures you sometimes to, to give up. So how would you uh, compare it to Australia? Because Australia, you said, was very surprising in the fact that it's still very male dominated is it in a similar way or is it a different way to australia no it's very different i would say i mean and australians they definitely face still this this hurdle but they are much more empowered they have more confidence than the japanese women and they and they know that it's yeah. funny how they you know they can realize that all the challenges they still have to face in japan and they are very open about that Yes. Because I think it's a way to process everything. So, no, it's, it's, it's very different. We never felt in Australia, you know, the kind of pressure that these women in Japan say they have to face daily. So it's, it's much more powerful and intense than, I would say, 
any other place that we've been so far. Yeah. So it's a huge challenge for them. Yes. And let's say what, sometimes we would come back to our place at night and we would go through like restaurants and bars like on the streets. We would pretty much see all men, all men hanging around yeah. uh, until late hours. After because, work. After yeah. work. Because it's part of their culture. That's what we learned from them as well. Even though you don't want to go out, you don't want to do a happy hour, it's kind of like cultural. It's a must. You have to go and you can only leave the bar after your boss leaves. Yes. Really? Yeah, yes. it, it's a very interesting aspect <laughs> for, for males, right. of Japanese society as a role because the collective is yes. much, much, much more important than the individual. And that's why one of the reasons entrepreneurship is not so high in the country as a, as a, as a whole. Because, yes. you know, entrepreneurship is, is you, you know, putting yourself first and say, okay, I'm going to stand out, I'm going to yes. build a business, I'm going to be the king of the world. And in Japan society... This is not necessarily, you know, a very well uh, characteristic for one to have. Yeah. So there are all sorts of challenges that they have to face. But are there opportunities there? I mean, do yes, you know, opportunities for entrepreneurs. Do you think the the opportunities are there, or is it very difficult as an entrepreneur because of that mentality? I would say that, of course, for women it's difficult because of this mentality. But it's not like there is no opportunity, especially because the country now has a a policy that they, they wanted to bring more women into the workforce, entrepreneurs are into the corporate. Like Japan is a country that is, is getting old. The, the economy is stagnated. They need to grow. They need to, you know, to empower and to bring these women to work as well because they need more women into the economy. There is a program, program called, called Womenomics. Yeah. Uh, the prime minister is trying to make like more women to, you know, come up and show up for business. And, and then the family will have to adapt to the new, to this new time. Yes. And like we were talking to one of the entrepreneurs that she put a platform for uh, kind of like a daycare, not a daycare, but like a nanny style. So in Japan, if you leave your child with a nanny, you would be seen as like a bad mom. How can you not give your time and have somebody else taking care of your child? Mm-hmm. But then this lady, she built a platform that let's say you want a nanny, but this nanny would teach your kid like French and no piano or something that you can justify. Okay, I have a nanny, but she's providing something that I, as a mom, could not. So then it's okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Fernanda was talking about all the effort that the government has been doing to attract these women. And of course, one of the policies and the, the, the mayor of Tokyo uh, which is a woman, by the way, the first woman to, to govern uh, Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, she's trying to put, to establish more daycare centers for yeah. women because this is key for those who want to go to work. Yeah. Who I'm going to leave my kids with? Yeah. So the government, they know they have to, to help as much as they, as they can in terms of infrastructure. And daycare, it's, it's huge along with, you know, resources. But they also know that it's not so easy to change a culture fast yes it's gonna take a while it's um you know <laughs> it's centuries and centuries of and other centuries of, of culture and yeah. social norms and social values they are trying to push against but these women are very clear from their side you know we have to keep pushing yeah. it's time to change so we have a bigger role in society and in business oh great okay so what are the main factors in the business ecosystem in japan well, they are, they, of course, they are very uh, focused on getting new knowledge always. They have very good education, of course. They are very focused. And, you know, uh, Japanese, as we know, of course, and might be one of the stereotypes, but they are, they are calm, right? They have this, you know, it's very easy to talk to them. They are very silent. In, in silence, I think it helps them. So it's, it's, it's a, it might be a frantic business uh, scenario in the corporations, yeah. But as a society, I know they are very focused, and that helps, I would say, these women to become entrepreneurs. They know they now they have more resources. Yes. It's, of course, it's a very well mature market. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they have access to whole Asia, uh, they have access to resources, financial resources, human resources. Now we see more and more uh, structures to help specifically uh, women entrepreneurs. We've had the chance to, you know, talk at least to two organizations that have 
programs focused on women entrepreneurs. Yes. So, you know, the business is the business environment is trying to, to become more welcoming of these women. So this is this is huge. Oh great. Okay. And any other challenges or advantages for the women there? So challenges, I, I think I they have a full yeah. bas- basket of challenges. We could <laughs> stay, stay like three hours talking about challenges, but what we see as a, uh, as a advantage that they are extremely well uh, prepared. Yes. Uh, and now they have, that, like, they have this focus on, you know, we wanted to be the change. We yep. wanted to be the trailblazers and, and uh, make sure that next generations will, be, ha- will have like an easier time to get into business. Mm-hmm. And I think like... It was one of, you know, that we have this stereotype that Japanese society is very closed, but we had like a extremely great surprise. They were super welcoming. They were super open to talk about their business, about their family life, about their culture. And I think this mindset that they have, like they are talking more, they're exchanging more ideas among them, like the yes. women. Yep. And I think this is going to be key for them to, you know, learn from each other and build like business and more yeah. business to the economy. I think they crave for these interactions. And one of the reasons is something that Fernanda mentioned at, uh, in early on in our conversation that 99% of the population in Japan is Japanese. So it's not a very diverse society. And, and they need, you know, different lines of thoughts, you know, critical thinking. So, so they can learn, they can expand, they can innovate. And, and I think women... Uh, they might realize much earlier than men in this aspect, those entrepreneurs, and they are really going after that. So I think having, you know, this in a conscious level, it's a major advantage for them. Oh, and, and then I would like to point it out on an entrepreneur that we met that, of course, like we, when we think about Japan is like technology, you know, it's like very developed and, and you know, like this kind of high tech uh, hub. Yes. We met uh, an entrepreneur that she's, Building a travel agents for stuffed animal. She was doing stuffed animals. Yes. yes. No, she, she doesn't do stuffed animals. She. <laughs> let's say that you have a Mickey Mouse and you want your Mickey Mouse to visit Tokyo. Yeah. So you send to the so you send the Mickey Mouse to her, and she has like a, it's not like only your Mickey Mouse. It's like your Mickey Mouse and many other stuffed animals coming from other countries mm-hmm. to visit Tokyo. So she has like, she puts them in a table to have the pre, you know, pre sightseeing meeting. And they are also stuffed animals. They, she takes these animals and she, she creates, creates story, right? She creates like a storyline. Oh, really? Really. You know, and we can imagine like usually when we, when we go to the countries, we try to talk to some of the entrepreneurs in advance through Skype. And when we were hearing about her story, we were like, really? Like you're saying like now, we thought at the beginning that we misunderstood her business. Yes. Yeah. But now we, we, we got it right. But it was, and especially because like um, we did like Canada, US, Mexico was like, was great, but nothing like surprise in terms of like weird business. Yes. So when we listen about her business, I was like, oh my God. And she was in finance, like a very structured mind with numbers. Yeah. So for us it was like, and she, it, we can, we will try to find a link for her. Yeah. Because she was featured on CNN. She, um, she has like a video on Facebook, like made for, what is plus, how to say plus the organization? AJ plus. A- it's a channel on Facebook. Yeah. AJ plus. is a channel on Facebook that also has her, her business feature. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> and for us, it's well like, oh my gosh. You know, like, was very different. I, we never saw that. It was a, a very curious type of business. And she has been, like, seven years already in, with the business. She's, she has, like, the government of South Korea. And what I'm saying about her is because sometimes we just have, like, ideas. And sometimes we just think that they're crazy ideas. And, you know, like, she, if she had thought that it was crazy and listened to all the people who were telling her, like, are you crazy? Because she comes from a finance background. She was working for major banks and traveling, you know, to Europe, to the U.S. And she said, no, that's what I want. Um, and she has been thriving. She has with her business. She wrote a book about it. She has a blog. And she has helping, like, many people from old age or people who cannot travel kids kids that have some sick cannot yeah. go out and she has like a very noble idea behind like to make sure that people can travel through their pets like their yeah. animals 
and yeah. it's quite different. Oh, good. It sounds very strange. Yes. <laughs> but obviously, if it's successful, great. Yes. Okay. And so um, what soft and hard skills have all of these entrepreneurs got in common? Or have, what have they had to develop? I think soft is like patience. Patient. Mm-hmm. Well, they're already very patient, I would yes. say, the Japanese. But other than that, they are very, very resilient. I think this is, yes. it's, you know, it's transparent for yeah. them. And, and I think the they're women. welcoming, you know, like very. Yes. They're very open to listen to what you're uh, saying, like exchange ideas. And like, uh, for me, it was the point that was uh, most, uh, that I wasn't expecting because we kind of like grew up always thinking, oh, society in Japan is very close. And yeah. this woman was extremely open to share with us. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think in terms of, if you can call it hard skills, again, uh, you know, they know they need, especially in, J- in Japan, to interact in a deeper level with other cultures. So, you know, uh, they realize that and they are going after that because this is a skill. I mean, you have to open yourself, of course, you know, it, you know new business models from other parts of the world. Uh, discuss business in different levels so they, they are learning to do that and this is so important for them and can you tell us about uh, one key motivational difference in japan that could help other women entrepreneurs around the world they are doing it you know despite all the naysayers yeah they cannot they should not you know all the pressures that they face they are doing it they, you know, they have their mind really set. Okay, I have this this idea, yes. and I'm gonna give it a try. And I know it's not gonna be easy, and, but I'm gonna do it. I, as Fernanda mentioned, they see themselves they're trailblazers. I think that's a huge motivational uh, step for them. Thank you very much, Fernanda and Tassie, for all the information about Japan. It sounds really interesting and very, very different. So we're looking forward to visiting. Canada next week. Wow, Canada, oh Canada. Okay. You can tell us all about Canada next week. Yeah, it's looking forward. Lovely. I'm Anna Letitia Cook. My guests were Fernanda Mora and Tatiana Mello, the girls on the road. You've been listening to us here at Women Up Radio. Women Up Radio.